Radiation shield vest can protect astronauts from solar storms. A vest developed by an Israeli company to protect astronauts from solar radiation in deep space is set to be tested on a lunar mission. The AstroRad Radiation Shield is a vest made of layers of non-metallic protective materials. It is tailor-made to each astronaut to protect the wearer's vital human tissues, particularly the stem cells. The vest will be tested on the Orion spacecraft, which is scheduled to fly beyond the protective shield of Earth's atmosphere and magnetic field. The astronauts on this mission will be exposed to space radiation. The vest is designed to protect the astronauts from solar storms and flares. The company has already produced a belt that protects rescue crews on Earth from harmful radiation, such as gamma-ray radiation emitted during nuclear disasters. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Want to know more about deep space exploration? We've got you covered. SpaceX aims to reach Mars by 2018. After much teasing, SpaceX finally announced a launch date for its mission to Mars, and it's in the very near future. SpaceX is partnering with NASA to send a Red Dragon, a modified Dragon 2 capsule, on a mission to Mars by 2018. The company has been delivering cargo to the International Space Station since 2012, but the Red Planet is 560,000 times farther away. Instead of the Falcon 9, the Red Dragon will be launched using the more powerful Falcon Heavy rocket. But while launching the rocket is relatively simple, the landing, especially on a planet like Mars, is where things get tricky. With a much thinner atmosphere than Earth's, there's a less cushion for incoming spacecraft, which increases the likelihood of a crash. The Dragon's heat shield can withstand temperatures over 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit, making it possible to safely enter and plummet through the Martian atmosphere. The capsule is also equipped with eight Super Draco engines, which would allow it to execute a propulsive landing in the Red Planet's service. which would allow it to execute a propulsive landing on the Red Planet's surface. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is set to reveal more details about the Mars launch at the International Astronautical Conference in September. Can the human body survive traveling to Mars? In a recent opinion article, U.S. President Barack Obama stressed his goal of not only sending humans to Mars, but making it possible for people to stay there for extended periods of time by 2030. But the journey alone won't be an easy one. Scientists say one of the dangers of traveling to Mars is exposure to radiation. Without the protection of Earth's atmosphere, humans are vulnerable to the sun's gamma rays and hot neutrons, which can cause cancer. A shield made of lead or water, especially in the form of ice, could be used to absorb the radiation and protect the human body. Spending less time in space could also reduce the effects of radiation. During space travel, humans are also prone to osteoporosis. Astronauts in space have been recorded losing 1 to 2 percent of bone mass per month. That could mean 10 to 25 percent of skeletal mass being lost during a year-long round trip to Mars. While exercise aboard spacecrafts may help humans retain muscle and bone mass, astronauts have still been recorded losing a significant amount during travel. Other effects of space travel on the human body include changes in the circulatory system and the immune system. Meanwhile, even after humans do make it to Mars, they will still need to battle significantly lower temperatures and a thin and low-pressure atmosphere. Astronauts might one day hibernate their way to Mars. Getting to Mars from Earth takes a long time, as long as 200 days. A group of scientists funded by NASA think astronauts could pass most of that time by hibernating in a sleep chamber, much like what you see here. Each chamber is outfitted with tubes that lower the body's temperature as well as provide nutrition. An intranasal cooling system would lower the astronaut's temperature by 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which significantly reduces metabolism. The astronaut is fed via catheters attached to the thigh or chest, while another tube carries waste away. This result is what's called a torpor-induced state, using therapeutic hypothermia. One concern is muscle atrophy due to lack of use. Scientists think they can address this through neuromuscular electrical stimulation. As the astronauts approach Mars, the wake-up cycle begins. 
Warming pads slowly raise the body's temperature. It takes roughly one hour for every one degree rise in body temperature. Fully awake after their long nap, the astronauts are ready to begin their Mars mission. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. NASA envisions a floating city above Venus's clouds. NASA envisions a mission to Venus that could eventually result in the construction of a floating city of solar-powered airships above Venus's clouds where humans could be able to live permanently. Venus's surface, unlike Mars, is nearly unvisitable. It has an atmospheric pressure up to 92 times greater than Earth's, a temperature of 462 degrees Celsius, and an atmosphere mostly made of carbon dioxide with a cloud layer made of sulfuric acid. To make exploration of Venus possible, NASA is thinking of developing a floating city above the planet's clouds at an altitude of about 50 kilometers, where conditions are more similar to Earth. First, NASA would send a robotic scout to determine the lay of the land. It would then send a crew that would spend 30 days floating above the planet in a 130-meter-long Zeppelin-style helium ship. The Zeppelin would be accompanied on its explorations by a smaller, 31-meter robotic, solar-powered helium airship. If successful, teams of two astronauts would each spend a year floating above the planet, and eventually, in a more distant future, NASA would construct a floating city of airships for permanent human presence. To develop the mission, NASA would use technology that currently or will soon exist, although NASA is a decade or two away from being able to launch such a mission.